Welcome back to ETV Power Women. Um, we're here today with Shiramal Kure, and just before the break, we touched on a very interesting subject, actually, and, and that's the sort of perception of women in society today, especially business women. As you said, you know, when you go for certain events or certain functions, sometimes you're looked upon not as a professional, yeah. but just as someone yeah. who's there to be pretty or pleasant right. or whatever. Yeah, that's, um, that's a sad thing, unfortunately. Yeah. But I, as you say, I think it's changing, but, but right now it is... Still a little yeah, bit in that um, like a, area. Yeah. Which, I mean, I think probably we've both grown up in, as, with that. Yeah. But I mean, I think what would be lovely to see or what would be encouraging to see is for younger women who are just starting their professional lives, to be able to be in a situation where they are it accepted for what for, they are, yeah. rather than yeah. I think we also grew up in a in a situation where the, the stereotype was there. You know, yeah. if you're a woman, you You've got this to is be. your particular role, and uh, yeah. which is changing now, and um, which I think I think both male and females have got used to that role, and yeah. they've grown up having those roles as, uh, as stereotypes. As stereotypes, and I, I think, as you said, it's nothing. It's just a cultural thing. It's yeah, not to be offensive no, exactly, in any way. Exactly. It isn't. It isn't. It's just it's one just of those we, things. Yeah, and it's not just here. I think it's all yeah. over the world. And but, uh, I um, think the Middle East is it's really bad. Yeah. It's very. It's another extreme. That's a yeah. But, yeah, but I guess it's there all over. That's all over. And what would you say, like, what would you say for someone, a young sort of professional starting out her career, what advice would you give to them on you know, I mean, what do you think it takes to make someone a success in whatever chosen field? Yeah, I think, uh, well, I, I feel if you're especially a career woman, yeah. yeah, I don't know, I personally felt a lot of guilt, for example, right. when I had my child. Yeah. Um, having to, because especially the field that I'm in, it involves a lot of after office hours. It's not yeah. just a typical 8 to 5, 9 yeah. to 5 job. So, uh, it, it, I mean, there's a lot of traveling overseas, there's yeah. a lot of entertaining uh, yeah. weekends and after office. Uh, so, therefore, a lot of time is needed. Yeah. And so, when you have to leave a young child at home and go for that, yeah. it's, it's a hell of a guilt thing. You I think feel that's, yeah, it tears at yeah. you? I think it's, it's, it's also a more female thing. Yeah. Um, so, I had to cope with that. And I'm sure a lot of Women females do. will... Uh, have to cope with that because that may be a biological or emotional thing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I think that's going to be tough for a woman, which is why I think a lot of women give up uh, their careers when, when they, they have, have kids, uh, which again is a choice yeah. that they make. You know, you take a break for a while and then, and and then could continue with it. Sometimes women, by uh, not by choice, I mean they are they are forced to do it by divorce or whatever yeah. reason. They have to sort of make a living by themselves. Yeah. So then, of course, that it's it's unfortunate that they've got to do it. You know, even be, be, they would like to spend time with the kids, yeah. they would have to do it by themselves. So it's 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 tough for a woman. But I think as long as as she believes in what she's doing and she yeah. does the best for herself and the family, which. Unfortunately for a woman, it's just not the child and the husband, it becomes extended, extended family. family. And uh, I, mean, I mean, you know, for example, even if it's a family function, yeah. you could be both working, but it's the wife it's your who's got responsibility, to do everything, yeah. buying the gifts, remembering birthdays, <laughs> it, it, it's all, you know, yeah. it's unfortunate, but that's, that's the way that's it is. That's reality. Yeah. So it's tough, it's tough for a woman uh, who decides to have a career, and especially yeah. a demanding career, if it's, yeah. I mean, the traditional things like a teacher and which I think is more uh, what women did before yeah. and much easier I think to cope because you, so the holidays are at the same time as, as the, kids the children. Holidays. So that's yeah. easier to cope but if you tend to sort of do something different then it is hard but I think so, so they've got to be strong, they've got to learn to cope with all these emotions and yeah. you know and, ca and carry on. Okay. Because finally, it's, it's your life as well. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Uh, so you've got to remember that, you know, it's, it's you've because you've got one life, they say, so you've got live to live it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. Well, on that note, I think we should take a look at the confession oh, okay. cam and um, see what your friend, your oh. surprise mystery <laughs> <laughs> friend has to say, has to say all okay. about you. Well, she's always had her own mind. I mean, uh, from the, from the time we were Here growing on. up together at uh, <laughs> Valley Sarah and at uh, Barnes Place. Uh, she obviously tried to control me and uh, she did control me quite well. She played the, 
the role of uh, obviously the elder sister plus uh, my mother as well sometimes uh, helped me in school, uh, decided whom I used to go out with, uh, you know, uh, had, a, had a strong influence in whom I selected as my partner. Uh, she was very concerned about me, uh, you know, she didn't want uh, me to get into trouble. She's always protective. I felt that, you know, whenever something, I, whenever she felt I was doing something wrong, uh, she always used to come and say, Mali, don't do this and do that and, you know, be careful, don't fall into this trouble, you know, you'll get into trouble. Uh, so always uh, she, she, she had that I, and, and I know that she still has that, you know, even in business. Uh, it's always that, you know, she's always protective and protected me and guided me, helped me, uh, you know, played that role. And um, yeah, I mean, now, now we work together uh, and uh, I have the same feeling, uh, same uh, kind of, you know, the elder sister, the, you know, my, my guardian protector, that kind of thing. You know, she, she always has that, you know, much more, she's much more stronger. Uh, than me as a person, you know, she, she, she'll she take on any challenge, nothing uh, kind of uh, troubles her, uh, though, though she's gone through a lot of difficulties in her own life, she's not got that in, in, in her, you know, on her, I mean, you know, let that affect the rest of the relationships and so on. So yeah, she's been a, a wonderful person to me and uh, to the family as well. I first got to know Shiroma when she joined JWT where I was working as the head of finance. Uh, she was a very, very professional finance director who did her work to the last detail and was exceptionally professional in the way she handled the job. So as a result, sometimes enthusiastic account people like myself found her a hindrance to our progress and we used to call her by the B word for the uh, exceptional professional manner in which she worked. But I guess the B word was used more with affection than with hate to the anger because she truly was an exceptional finance professional at that time at JWT. She's a woman who is exceptionally professional, very straight about what she does and you, that is why I engaged her as a director of this company of Leo Burnett when I commenced the company. Why is she so professional? Because she tells what she has to say. She's very straightforward, honest and sincere in a point of view. If she will call a spade a spade and I think that makes a great difference when you have professionals of that caliber working with you. Shiromal, I would like to say, is an awesome person. As a person, she's amazing. She's a friend and she's always there when you need her. She's kind, she's very caring and very thoughtful, I think. I mean, almost, I think every day we would talk to each other about something. Not that we plan to talk to each other, but there's some reason we would have to share some information, get some advice, or update on each other on some information, news, gossip, whatever. So she's a really interesting person to know and the, I think very warm and caring. She has lots of friends, but I guess one of the things is that she's a very good friend to her very good friends. And I'm, I think I'm privileged to be amongst her good friends. And I appreciate everything she does. But and also the other side that many I'm sure know or don't know about her is the fun side. I mean, there are days that we laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And the sense of humor, her own ability to laugh at herself, at, uh, at things around her, the realities around her is great. So it's great. she's great company and very enjoyable to be with. That's really touching, yeah, actually. Yeah, I know. I, I was hoping I wouldn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I yeah, no, that's really sweet, actually. Even what Hiran was saying about yeah, being the protective I, older sister. Yeah, I know. Just, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, I actually. suppose sisters, you know, it's how a natural yeah, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like maybe I am more protective now that he says it. I hope <laughs> I haven't looked <laughs> my son. <laughs> no, but even, I mean, I was very touched, actually, what, right, by what Ranul was saying as well. Yeah. And so you guys have known each other. Yeah, for, we work together. I mean, I, at JWT, and as he said, we used to always fight, you know, because there was this, he was this young, enthusiastic account executive, and I was trying to say, you can't do this, and you can't do that. <laughs> don't spend, it was fun, don't spend it was that fun, money. yeah, it was oh. fun. All right, well, I think we have to take another little break, um, but we're going to come back with the dreaded oh, yeah. 10, <laughs> which, as, as we sort of spoke about this earlier, and it's, um, it's a segment where we're going to ask you 10 questions uh -huh. where you can't think, you have no time oh. to think, you've just got to say what's at the top of really? your head, just okay. first answer, right. first thing that comes to your brain has to come out. Oh. 
Right, well, don't go anywhere, because we're going to be back with the dreaded 10, which is going to be a lot of fun, and you're not going to want to miss it, so we'll see you after the break. Well, welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we've just been having a chat with the Managing Director of Jetwing Travel, Sheromal Kure. Um, we've had a fascinating, actually, chat, and now we're on to the dreaded 10, um, the sort of more fun where we actually put our guests on the spot for a little bit. Um, the dreaded 10 is sponsored by Pond's Age Miracle and um, I've got my clipboard here with oh, all yeah. the questions. <laughs> <laughs> so are you, re are you ready to go? Yeah, okay. Yeah? okay. First one, what makes you smile? Oh, uh, just the ordinary things in life. Yeah, anything. just the simple things yeah. in life. Okay. What's your deepest fear? Um, I actually don't have any fears. Yeah? Watch Fearless? Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> You're yeah. lucky. <laughs> Not in, maybe the darkness, if at all. Yeah. 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 You don't darkness. like it, I mean, it's very dark and, yeah, to be alone it's in the bit, dark, yeah. maybe, yeah. What is the one place you want to see before you die? Cuba. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that looks beautiful. It yeah. looks like, you know, you could just go back in time. Yeah, actually, yeah. not be more than before I died, before Fidel Castro died, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I got to go there quickly. <laughs> if you were made leader of the nation, what would be the first thing that you would do? I guess right now, do something with IDPs. Yeah. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> if a movie were made of your life, who would play the lead role? Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Maybe myself. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what annoys you the most? Annoys? Yeah, people who are not sincere and yeah. who do not talk behind your back. That really annoys me. Yeah. A lot of people like that in Columbia. Yeah, I know, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the way it is. What was your most thrilling experience? Um, I guess climbing Machu Picchu. Yeah. I went there with my brother and my sister-in-law and Tajit and I yeah. said that that was an amazing experience. Oh, it was, yeah. Because we did this trek, four day trek with uh, you know no water or anything. You know, it, was, <laughs> it was amazing. But but the final seeing Machu Picchu was just fantastic. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, if you were given one wish by a genie, uh, mm -hmm. what would it be? And you can't wish for Another three wishes. Okay. <laughs> it's just one. <laughs> uh, maybe to have my father back. Mm. Yeah. Um, what character from a book describes you best? Tough <laughs> That's person. Tough one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and the last one is what makes you lose track of time? Um, maybe a book, yeah. reading a good book, reading or, a good book. or be, be, be friends, you know, good company. Just do stack of time. <laughs> okay. Well, that was the dreaded oh, ten, which is, you know, we say we hype it up to be the dreaded ten, I but know, you know, I know, we're going I'm easy nice. on you guys. I think Thank you. People who come later on in the show will, <laughs> will feel the full uh, force of true. the dreaded that's, that's, ten. Thank you for being generous and kind. <laughs> yeah, we thought we'd ease you into oh, it gradually. Well, Sharmal, I think we've probably come to the end of the show, which, and I'm sort of very reluctant actually to say bye to you because oh, it's thank been. You. Um, it's been very interesting. and It was nice talking to you yeah, too. And, and it's just very generous of you to sort of come no and problem. spend some time with us. Time. And I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank um, you for having me on the show. Thank no, you. thank you. Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, unfortunately, that's the end of our show for today. And we will be back next week with another powerful woman. So don't forget to tune in. Um, and until then, goodbye.